I had always heard the term, a marriage made in heaven, describing a long, happy marriage. As I think back over our 76 years of happy married life, I can find no better term to describe the one that began May the 9th, 1943. How else can I explain two babies born on Kansas farm a year apart and a hundred miles apart, both choosing Kansas State as their college. However, we were not to meet until our senior year when Martha and her date came through the receiving line at the annual military ball. <coughs> God brought us together again with our paths crossing as we went to class. Martha practiced her rule of being friendly and waved at me as she drove by. I decided to test her friendly policy and invited her to go on a picnic with others from Kansas State. One was from Hawaii and brought his ukulele and sang Hawaiian love type songs for our entertainment. The evening was a success and we started dating and got engaged in December on the veranda of Van Zyl Hall, a Kansas State women's dorm during the only practice blackout of WW2 in Manhattan. <coughs> we were married May the 9th, after which we went to Boston where I attended Army Radar School with classes at Harvard and MIT. Next were orders sending me to Fort Bliss where Martha had taught school in El Paso. Other orders followed, sending me to the South Pacific, where General MacArthur needed me to fight the war, help him fight the war. Martha moved to Denver, where two of her girlfriends lived while their husbands were overseas. There she gave birth to Stuart. While I returned, when I returned home, and she and Stuart had moved back to Manhattan and had an apartment less than a block from the Presbyterian Church where we had been married. My post-World War II jobs took us to Southeast Kansas, then the Great Bend, followed by 11 years in Wichita and the births of Linda, Carolyn, and Steve. Promotions took us to Kansas City, followed by six years in Muncie. The next six years in New Canaan, Connecticut, were happy ones for Martha, where she learned to cook fresh seafood we all enjoyed, and was busy playing bridge with in her afternoon bridge games. She kept her family of four in line with the admonition, be friendly. And as long as you put your feet under my table, you will go by my rules. Our following years in Muncie on Chinko Pen were happy as we watched our family grow and marry. Sad when we received the news of Steve's death in Alaska. That was all set by the birth of six great-grandchildren, Peter, Andrew, Alex, Aubrey, Elena, and Anna. The decision to move to Westminster Village was a wise one. It not only relieved us of the problems of home ownership, but it gave us access to the health care we needed as we aged. With that, I must say goodbye, Martha. You are a wonderful wife, mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Thank you for those 76 happy years together. <laughs>